How's it going everybody? AJ Holmes here today at the Negative Supply Headquarters. And today I wanted to make a quick video telling you all about 4x5 pinhole photography in the context of making environmental behind the scenes portraits here at our, in our workshop. Uh, some still life photos of products and workspaces here in our workshop, as well as some architectural photos of the outside of our building. Before we dive into making a few photos, I wanted to quickly tell you about the tools we're using for today's demo. So I'm using my Lensless Camera Co. two inch super wide angle four x five birch wooden camera. So this two inch camera is the equivalent of using roughly a 50 millimeter lens on four x five film, which is a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent of really as wide as 15 or 16 millimeters. So this is a hyper wide angle, lots of just stretching and distortion in the corners. Uh, pretty extreme angle of view, and that's one of the reasons why I love pinhole photography. It's kind of the, the play and exaggeration of this way of working. So this is the camera. The shutter is a manual leaf shutter, as they call it, on the front. And there's just a tiny little drilled out, uh, I guess it's a piece of tin or aluminum for the lens itself. Uh, just a, a literal pinhole. That's where these cameras get their names. And this has an f-stop of right at 154, so uh, pretty slow. A few other things we're gonna be using today, I'm actually gonna be using Kodak 320 TXP film. Uh, this is one of my favorite films, not just for pinhole, but for general photography. I've got five ToyoView uh, cut film four x five holders, loaded, labeled, and ready to go. Another thing you're gonna need when you're making pinhole photographs, even if you're in fairly good light, like we are right now, you're gonna need a reciprocity correction chart. Uh, usually I have these saved on my phone or I'll have a small laminated version I can keep in my wallet. Don't have that with me today. So I actually just printed this off online. And if you're watching this video and you need help finding a reciprocity chart, let us know in the comments and uh, me or Diego will try and send one over to you or give you a good reference uh, if you need one. I also have my Nikon SB800 to build flash for a couple of scenes and uh, effectively try and reduce the uh, exposure time needed to uh, adequately expose our film for reciprocity failure. And last but not least, I have our negative supply light meter LM1. Uh, this is one of our earlier kind of beta slash prototype units, but it's gonna work really well for today's demo and we're really excited to bring this along. So this first scene, I'm actually just gonna do a really up close and intentionally tilted down wide angle shot of a few stacks of our film carrier 120s here in our shop. Uh, these went through initial assembly uh, today and yesterday. They've still got to go through QC and pack and ship before they go to our customers, but I thought this would be a pretty interesting uh, photograph, kind of a rare sighting of a bunch of 120s together. Uh, one of the things that I do with my pinhole camera, because I bought this used, uh, you can still buy these new, but this one has probably been in use for many, many years, probably 10 plus years. As a result, uh, this shutter still works pretty well, but sometimes it likes to fall. I have tightened the screw before and that works as well, but one of the things that I do just as an additional fail safe is I just put a little rubber band over the top and then I will open the shutter and the friction from that rubber band leaves it open and then I'll close it. So um, you'll see me doing that a little bit as I make photographs here. I just kind of wanted to explain that. Newer cameras, tighter cameras aren't really gonna need something like that. But a lot of my exposures end up being hours long. Uh, so I like to be able to walk away confidently from the camera and not have to wonder if the shutter is gonna close during the exposure. So whenever you put the rollers back in this camera, the bottom one just kind of helps to, uh, I guess, keep the bottom of the holder tight. But the top one, the larger bar, when you put it in the back, you want to put it in and then actually roll it down pretty far to keep that film plane pretty flat. You don't want to just force it with all your weight and all your muscle, but it needs to be pretty tight. So this beta version of the LM1 uh, only goes to F64. The production models are going to go much smaller, which is gonna be great for pinhole. But for today, with uh, 320 TXP, I usually rate it at ISO 250, but since I can only go to F64 and I need to get to 154, I'm gonna rate it at ISO 100, basically to give me some exposure compensation. For this light, I'm getting 20, 
25 seconds. I'm probably just gonna round that up to 30 seconds. And then corrected for reciprocity, my chart is saying, let's find it on here, about three minutes. And we'll do a three minute exposure of this and then we'll go to the next scene. So for this next photo, I'm just gonna do a wide angle shot of our workshop. Uh, usually there's a lot of people in here and there's a lot of energy just all around the room. But I think it's gonna be kind of interesting to see a shot of the space without people in it, but product everywhere and you can tell where people have been. So I'll set this one up. We'll do a long exposure of that. Then we'll do a few more and uh, look forward to sharing some of the results later in the video. Ooh, I got an idea, but I'm gonna need a taller ladder. I'm gonna need like a really tall ladder. I don't know, I just, I wanna, I wanna do something ridiculous, clearly. I'm gonna do a wide angle exposure of the workshop, but didn't really feel like I could get the elevation I wanted. So I had the uh, tripod straddled across two tables and I'm using a ladder. Uh, don't try this at home. I'm doing this in our workshop under supervision of multiple team members. Uh, so definitely don't do this alone. Um, so the exposure again, metering at ISO 100 for exposure compensation with the light meter LM1. Essentially exactly the same as it was before. So I'm gonna do another three minute exposure of this scene. I'm gonna do a long exposure of one of our 3D printers. It's actually printing some of our film drying clips right now. And 40 seconds. We'll probably just treat that uh, three and a half minutes. We'll say three and a half minutes. Technically it should be like over four minutes, but we got more photos to take. So we're gonna do three and a half minutes. Let me set a timer on my phone. Great. Pull the dark slide. And open the shutter. Start the timer. That's the spirit. All right, one second. You can do it. You can do this. You have to stay very still. All right, so super, super still. So I'm gonna do a really quick photo of Joe from the Negative Supply team. It's gonna be about one second, and he's gonna stay super still. Everything's nice and locked down. Dark slide pulled, open, one, close. Yep, cool, and let's actually bracket that and shoot one more, just to make sure we have it. Never done rapid fire with pinhole. It's kind of one giant oxymoron. Okay. I'm actually gonna go ahead and, that's a lie. Okay, hold still. Take a, take a deep breath. Now let it out and then hold it. One, two. Cool. So I kind of like this scene because there's this tree and this sign and the building, lots of kind of complimentary lines, lots of verticality. So I'm gonna take a picture of this. I need to grab my light meter, however, and I'll be right back. All right, so this needs to be about a five second exposure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Close. Now I kind of like the idea of a wide shot here showing uh, behind the scenes of editing or filming, but also this is a picture of the side of the negative supply building. Grab the camera. 
wondering if we should just do this uh, kind of a standard long exposure, but if it's gonna give us enough kind of clarity or contrast if me and Diego are gonna stand out enough, or, because the exposure time here in this light, well, I say that and the sun comes out, 1.6 seconds, that would correct to like two, two and a half seconds. One thought I'm having is, can we just really quickly open and close the shutter and pop a flash, wide angle, bounce back at us to really fill us in? There's not gonna be a lot of information whether the flash doesn't land, um, but we might as well try it. Let me grab my flash. Um, Diego, do you think you would be able to pop the flash, manually pilot the flash? at like this distance. Yeah. Find the red button on the back, the little baby red button. It will blind you, so it's at F64. That's about the correct distance. You probably want it to be kind of like this where it's not shooting straight at the lens, kind of off to the side a little bit. That red button there on the back. All right, find that, keep your finger on that. That, that's fine, I think that's fine. Tilt a little more this way. Okay, and up a little bit, down a little. There you go, right there. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I'll tell you when, I'm gonna pull the dark slide. All right, on three, one, two, in. No idea, no idea how that's gonna look. Probably not enough light, but uh, we'll see. Let's do a wide angle shot of the back of the building, the front of the building, and the side. And that'll be the last three sheets of film. All right, so this is a four second as metered exposure of the back of the negative supply building. We're gonna correct this to eight, 10 seconds. Uh, probably just do nine or 10 seconds. It's kind of hard to give these scenes too much light because we are in open shade. So let's pull the dark slide and I'm just gonna count this off to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Cool. And one thing, when you're making pinhole photos, it's a good idea to not touch the camera. Like, don't touch the tripod, don't touch the camera unless you absolutely have to. The longer the exposure, the less you're gonna notice any shake if you do interfere with the camera. But that's really only once you get into many minutes or hours. All right, five seconds again. So we'll do 10 to 12 second exposure. Then we'll have a look. So, dark slide pulled. One, two, three. 